So when Mies came to IIT, he had already had a very full career in Europe and had really made his name. And he was interested in the challenge of designing the IIT campus. So I think a lot of what we focus on now when you look at the IIT campus, people think a lot about the individual buildings, but really the achievement in some ways, um, in Mises' mind, was the layout of the campus. And there hadn't really been a campus like that before um, that was laid out in the way that this one is. And all of the buildings are placed so that they sort of slide past one another. Um, he talked about it as almost like stones in a river and water would sort of flow around the stones um, just in the same way that people now walk the campus and you sort of walk past one building and on to the next. So some people come to the campus and say, well, we just ended up with a bunch of these boxes, right? They're really bland, they're really boring. He didn't have very much imagination. Um, and partly you have to understand that Mies was designing based on a program that was given to him by the president of the university at the time who said, Mies, we need buildings that can house classrooms and laboratories, right? They weren't supposed to be really elegant um, residences for people. They weren't supposed to be glamorous buildings. There wasn't a lot of money to spend on them. So Mies was really challenged to come up with something that was very practical. About eight years ago, 2003, we got started with the Mies Society because people recognized that the 18 buildings that he had created on the IIT campus um, really needed a lot of restoration work. That they looked bad on the outside, they were run down because no one had been uh, doing all the upkeep that needed to happen. Also kind of the people who have come after him and whether people have designed um, I think in tandem with what he did or even in a big contrast to what he did. So that do they love Mies and they're still doing it or they can't stand Mies and they're doing something really different, but either way they're sort of in dialogue with Mies. And so we try to keep create programming and stories and events and things that help people to understand that. Yeah, so the hammer um, we created just as part of sort of a, a really a joke. Um, it was sort of a prop at the event in 2005 that we called Smash Bash when we were initiating the restoration of SR Crown Hall. So we needed to, in that restoration, we were gonna take out all of the glass from the building. And so we had a party for donors who had helped us raise the money for the restoration fund um, the night before the construction crew was gonna come in and start doing that. And so we had three people who could break the first panes of glass with really official sledgehammers, like full-on sledgehammers, take a big swing at it, and they wore safety goggles, and they had suits that would protect them and the whole thing. Um, but we also had guests at the party who hadn't sort of, you know, spent the money on eBay to get to be eligible to break the real glass. They could stand there with this styrofoam sledgehammer and kind of look like they were going to take a big swing. Um, and then there was this um, big pile of glass, of course, from the windows. And so we swept it up and, and saved some of it. And, um, I mean, it's kind of funny because, of course, it's just in these really goofy sherbet containers um, in my office. But this is all the glass that had been broken from Crown Hall.